Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and today we're out feeding and watering our rabbits. It warmed up a little bit at 16 today, but it's gonna get back down to right around zero. It's been zero, five, 10 degrees. And yeah, it's just that time of year. So, you know, we'd be miserable out here, but these rabbits are doing great. You can tell they're jumping around, they're ener energetic, they're playing. Okay, so it's January. It's that time of year where folks might be thinking about starting their rabbitry. They're thinking about, are they gonna do colony? Are they gonna do cages? And I just wanted to talk about how both of them are great. Depends how you wanna raise your rabbits, what kind of goals you have for your rabbitry, and uh, we'll go from there. This time of year, if your rabbits aren't eating their pellet, you may need to change the water a little bit more frequently because they won't eat unless they can have some water. Today it warmed up to 16, but in a couple days it's gonna be into the negatives. And this time of year, you may need to dip your bowl five seconds, whereas you used to only have to dip it one second to get that ice to pop out. It just depends on how much ice is in that bowl. They may pull the bowl in, they may chew up those bungees, so I usually keep some bungees by the rabbitry. My eyes are watering, it's so cold out here. Uh, so let's head inside and we'll talk more about colony or cages, what's right for you. Here we go. Okay, so we're inside now and we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk rabbits. I have my outdoor background, so we still have the outdoor feel, but okay, so why are you raising rabbits? Why do you want them? You know, do you wanna just enjoy your rabbits in the backyard? I mean, a lot of people wanna do that, that's fun. When I was younger, I dated a girl that had all sorts of animals. Her mom had 16 acres and I couldn't believe all these animals they were raising and they weren't farming or producing any meat from any of them. So there, there's a lot of folks that enjoy that. And it, you know, it's just another way of having pets. You know, certain animals you can't have inside like chickens, but some people just love to watch them peck around. Same thing with rabbits. Having an open range colony set up outside, it doesn't take long to set up. Maybe a dozen T posts, a hundred foot, a four foot cage wire. And this colony setup is gonna be, you know, really set up in no time. Try to find a, a shady spot and they're gonna burrow and they're gonna create little tiny warrens and they'll bury their nests when they kindle. And uh, rabbits can be rabbits. And you're gonna have this thing set up in no time. You're not gonna have to build any cages or maintain any cages. That's pretty neat, that's a good pro. That's definitely a positive about colony setups. Letting your rabbits free range, um, it's fun to watch them interact. So let's talk about some of the bad parts of colony open range setups. Anytime you have rabbits sharing an open ground, that opens the door for parasites. You may have to deworm your rabbits in the future. Of course, there's gonna be fleas. Some folks don't think rabbits can get fleas. They absolutely can get fleas. Anytime your rabbits are on the ground, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna be susceptible to uh, the fleas or the ticks or any of that. So you're gonna have to diatomaceous earth your, your rabbits from time to time. You can dust a food grade DE um, around your pen, run open colony setup. Um, you can dust, you can put a little bit of DE in your burrows or if you have totes or buckets or whatever the heck you're using. Um, a little bit goes a long way. That powder, you don't want your rabbits to breathe it in, but, but yeah, that's something you're gonna have to watch out for. You're gonna have to watch out for injuries. You know, you're gonna have to let the rabbits establish who's gonna be submissive, who's gonna be dominant. It helps if they're siblings. Those rabbits will always get along a lot better. But when you're introducing rabbits, from different bloodlines, that's gonna be challenging. So just be prepared. You'll probably see a lot of scratching and pinning, and that's just them working it out. You're also gonna to have to deal with rabbits that are escaping. It only takes a few minutes for a rabbit to burrow out, so it's necessary to trench down that colony setup and make sure your rabbits can't easily just slide underneath that fence, that cage wire. This may not even affect you if you're not interested in this, but selling rabbits, you know, for one, selling rabbits, is, they're a lot easier if you can offer the genetic information of when they were born, who are they, who's in the bloodline, because if you can't do that, when, you're, when rabbits are just running free, breeding when they want, breeding randomly, you know, if you can't have that data or timing or, you know, schedule these sales, that makes it difficult. Also, on the day that you need to pick the rabbit up, you have to catch the rabbit, unless you catch it for, napping or maybe it just had a meal and it's just being lazy you're gonna have to find this rabbit catch the rabbit plus you don't know if the rabbit is young or old or you know what so that's that's trouble too but again if you're not selling rabbits or if, it, if you're not even planning on filling the freezer or doing any of that then you don't have to even worry about that so i would say colony setups are really good for those that just want to have pets just want to have another 
uh, maybe a rabbit here, a rabbit there. So let's talk about why someone would go with cages. Okay, so we've talked about having rabbits in the backyard, just having pets, enjoying your animals. But let's talk about running a rabbitry. Like you want to run, name your rabbitry, provide breeding stock, maybe even show rabbits, then cages will be right for you because you need your rabbits to be healthy. They can't have parasites, fleas, worms, any of that. You need them to be separated. They can't fight, they can't have injuries. Offer a pedigree, you'll be able to get a premium price for your rabbits. You'll have all that genetic information because you'll be able to time out, schedule, all the breeding, the kindling. A lot of folks look at the cages and they just immediately think um, they're, they're, these animals are being deprived. These domesticated rabbits have been caged for multiple litters a year. Thousands and thousands of generations of rabbits have lived in the cage, been born in the cage, died in the cage, and they're not being deprived of anything. They've never known liberty. They don't forget or miss anything they haven't had. And these rabbits are producing in these cages and studies show that how much they need. They need 0.5 square feet for every pound of rabbit. A nursing doe needs 0.6 square feet. That pretty much comes out to 30 by 30 cages, 18 inches tall. 30 by 36 inches for a nursing doe. We breed our rabbits consistently because when you give them something to work on, a purpose, they're working towards the litter, they're nursing a the litter, they're kindling their litter, they're always working towards something. That's the way we raise our rabbits. We raise our rabbits in cages. I enjoy the rabbits. I don't do it to get rich. I don't do it to pay the bills. It's strictly something I enjoy. I love making these videos. Same thing with YouTube. I upload videos whenever I'm doing something and that's the way I go about it. I, I don't go about it like a business or something I have to do because then I would get stressed out and I'd start to go through the motions and lose my passion. So it's important to raise your rabbits the way you, you want to. What's, what's important to you? Selling rabbits or just having rabbits? When you're raising rabbits for that purpose, these cages aren't cruel. They're keeping them healthy. You set them down on the ground, they sit there. You, if, even if they escaped, they would just be easy prey for predators. So you just have to remember these are domesticated rabbits. Inexperienced rabbit raisers are first to jump at cage floor bottoms are bad. You know, they're cruel, they cause sore hocks, all that stuff. You can always spot someone who is new to rabbits because they will say things that aren't only just a myth, like don't touch your rabbits or your mom will stop nursing them, but the people that are new to rabbits are the, the loudest. I think the number one thing you have to figure out is why are you raising them? And then go from there. You know, raising rabbits is a forgotten art. It's something that used to be so natural, but the more people that move into cities, they get so distant from what was so natural, and then they have to relearn all these things. You know, rabbits are quiet, they produce fertilizer, they're pretty clean in general, they're a clean animal, they don't take up a lot of space, and I recommend this for everybody. And it's so easy to fill the freezer with chemical-free, high-quality meat. It doesn't matter if you're gonna colony raise your rabbits or if you wanna run a rabbitry. We've adopted a hybrid system. We do have runs. Now, those runs do present challenges, and you know we've had rabbits get injured just from digging up sharp metal. Uh, we've had rabbits, um, uh, they burrow out. Be prepared for injuries. Um, cages are a terrific tool. They're gonna keep your rabbits healthy. Cage floor bottoms break the cycle of coccidiosis when the manure is falling through the, the cage floor. So if I forgot anything about colony raising, pros and cons, uh, cages, please leave it below. I always appreciate anybody who takes the time to comment and uh, share their experiences. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.